Hey. Sounds like, uh, seems like we're on now, but let's see who's joining us so far. Hey, Susan Fowler, my, you know, portrait studio buddy. Thank you for joining us. Tyler Happer. What? I haven't seen you in forever. It's happening. <laughs> Tyler Hafford's watching. Yeah. All right, Tyler, if you got any comments, I want to hear from you. Yes. I know you are a gung-ho at entrepreneurship and you got a lot of ideas. Do you have any opinions about anything? Post it. We'll talk and chat about it. And uh, by the way, welcome. I'm Subban Pantai. I'm Sean Hill. And welcome to The Average Joe Daily Show. That's right. Where we have no outline of what we're doing. We have no, we're not like prepared for anything. We kind of like look. We look, look at, at some a few topics, but not not but it's like unorganized. Details. It's yeah. kind of unorganized. Not real detailed. So uh, let's just say you can persuade us to discuss other topics besides what we have in mind. If they're cool topics. If they're yes, that's right. I'm yeah. not going to talk about like arm chair rests, chair arm rests, or fake eyelashes. Yeah, I don't. I don't care about fake eyelashes. Hey, Bill Lyons is joining us. He does, uh, Bill, you know Bill Lyons? He's a- I don't know Bill Lyons. He's an awesome DJ. I've, I've, met, I've uh, seen him and met up with him at many events that I've uh, photographed. And uh, I think he's doing a, a, he does a live DJ show on a regular basis. Uh, Bill, can you send a link or the times that you actually do your live DJ parties? Cause he does live DJ parties on Facebook. And you can join him and listen to his music and you can make requests and stuff like that. Oh, nice. Mixing it up. Yeah, he mixes Making it up. some smashes. Uh, I'll, I don't know exactly what he does. I'm going to have to join in one of these nights when I'm not uh, on uh, quarantine karaoke. Yeah. Checking out all the uh, awesome talent that's happening there. A good 80s smash mix would be awesome. 80s smash hit? Yes. Why don't you come, with, come up with something? Maybe uh, someone would actually sing it. If you come up with some ideas, people would probably sing it. What's Tyler saying here? <laughs> uh, Tyler Apps says, Bill, Bill Lyons in this thing. Yeah. <laughs> Manny Mayo just joined in. Cool. Dude, you have more people than I do this time around. How's that happen? <laughs> I don't know. It's swapping over. This Tyler's talking going. about Sasquatch now. Sasquatch? I love Sasquatch, by the okay, way. Okay, Sasquatch. He thinks they're aliens. Okay, so Sasquatch. <laughs> well, okay. If they're, not, if they're not aliens, how come we don't have fossils how come we don't have bones skulls or anything like that they got to be aliens they because can because they don't exist because they can disappear <laughs> wait there's there's people that have seen it okay so i think i think they're shape shifter, shifters they can shift shape and become different things they can disappear so that's how that's how. hi shaylin shaylin schools was a good friend of our family uh when we lived in holton we first immigrated to america nice and uh she was uh a few houses down from us at that time it's, it was franklin street but apparently they changed the name of the street since we lived there this is back in 80 1980. what's it called i have no idea what street is called now but it used to be called franklin, franklin. street yeah all, all the names. street names are all reused everywhere everywhere it's it's so weird how they they changed the name of the street completely i'm like wait a second i know what street we lived on and then i go there and it's like a total different name and you're no longer in that place anymore. No, we're not in that place anymore. So yeah, Sasquatch. My daughter got this really cool t-shirt and uh, and I'm like, you know what? It's not as cool as a t-shirt that I really wanted. As The t-shirt I wanted was a, uh, a Bigfoot that says, you know, a hide and seek champion on it. Or social distancing champion. There you yeah, go. That would, like be, that. that would be my guess. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing guys in costume. Right. Uh, Shaylin says it's now called Chandler Street and instead of ah. uh, instead of uh, Franklin. Franklin. Uh, which is, I, I don't know why it was called or changed. All right. Who knows? Who knows? That's weird. So, you don't think they exist at all? <laughs> yes. Tyler wants to know our favorite conspiracy theories. Favorite? This is Sasquatch is a conspiracy uh, by wait. people who want to mess with other people. Well. I I don't know what you would consider a favorite because I have some conspiracy theories, but I wish it wasn't. Well, yeah, you kind of wanna you kind of want some of the stuff to be true because then it takes away from the it's just us mm -hmm. thing. You know, it would be cool for something like that to exist, especially something that had better technology than us. Yeah, but I don't think there's a bunch of uh, Sasquatches running around with like 
um, eye watches and stuff on that beam them up to their ship. I, I, I think their technology is more uh, telepathic. More like maybe they are beyond. May, maybe more cerebral yeah. than 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 tech gear, physical gear. So it's more cerebral, so more uh, m more telepathic or stuff that they can do, you know, like telekinesis and things like that. And not uh, not necessarily something physical or that you can see or feel or touch. I wouldn't doubt that some developed race or species has way better control of their brains than we do. Right. Well, what's, what's the guess that we use 10% of our brain? Something like that. Right. I mean, imagine a being that can use 100% of their brain. Yeah. And how many people out there, don't lie, have tried to like manipulate an object with their mind when no one's around you're like maybe maybe i could just make I that do, come, i do that every, to me. every time i go to the grocery <laughs> store i use my jedi powers and open the doors like this well i do that too before i get to it you know like 10 feet away yeah have you ever done that actual like open <laughs> stand in front of the open and then just i have a grand exit from i the have place. so uh so something exciting happening this week <laughs> <laughs> How can it be more exciting than Sasquatch <laughs> and beam it up to alien ships? Uh, in my daughter's opinion, there is no such thing as something more important than Sasquatch hunting. I'd do it. She's always prepared to go out and hunting for Sasquatch and, and doing nighttime investigations and things like that. Heck yeah, give me a crew and some cameras and a show. <laughs> did you, do, do you know how that. well they did? Pay me to hunt Sasquatch. Did you no. see how well they did? They started off thinking that it was just a plain old like joke. These guys on Animal Planet. Yep. And they're asking people that are into animals and more scientific and more like uh, veterinarians type people. And they're they're like, oh, we're going to do a show about uh, hunting for Bigfoot. And they're like, are you kidding me? No one's going to watch that. And then they're like, what, in season 12? And they're, they, I think they just finished it. Like, hey, I never thought ancient, ancient aliens would make it to like season 14. It's, it's, That's 14 years of rehashing the same information over and over <laughs> and over. How many times can you present the same type of evidence? Apparently infinitely. Uh, infinitely. And yes. I've, noticed, I've noticed that on YouTube too. A lot of people that are media content creators. Yeah. They rehash the same content over and over, and people are just like all over it. Even me, I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, that you delivered it a different way to me, and that right. I'm interested in seeing this again. Well, I, I think that's what it is. It's like maybe people aren't ready to hear it the first time, so they do it a second time. And they're like, they you get a little something more. Then yep. they redo it another time with a different angle. They're like. Wow, this hey. makes even more sense. So each time it gets better for and some people. Yeah, and if you're interested in the subject matter, you're right. just going to keep watching that same thing over and over. Right. And this is something that I do, so I'm not like yeah. bashing on anybody. I'm, it's like just something I notice psychologically. Right. I mean, it's, it, if it's content that you're already interested in, it's like that much more information will make you... Uh, Anything. Different camera angle. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I didn't see it from that side. And, and, and just... Uh, yeah, Shaylin says, never give up. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> just keep on believing. Just, yep. just like, what, what's that group that sings, uh, Don't Stop Believing? Oh, Don't Stop Believing? Isn't yeah. that Journey? Yes, Journey. There we go. <laughs> you that, that Journey? That could be our theme song. Uh, about, <laughs> what's that group uh, that sings? Uh, about about our conspiracy theories. That should be the theme song that comes on. Don't stop believing. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what the royalty payments would be to use that song. Uh, probably more than we can handle, of course, yeah. because we're running on nothing. <laughs> Steve, Steve Perry, cut us a break on your old songs. Steve like, Perry's uh, amazing. Did you see that video the family did together uh, in the kind of in quarantine? They did frame per frame music video of uh, Steve Perry's. Yeah, song. you showed that to me. It's it was amazing. It's the side by side on that Very frame basic. per frame. So talking about that, I'm gonna skip to my my. My uh, my activity that we're being involved in. So Sean and I are co-producing a music video, and we're matching frame per frame a uh, music video from uh, Justin Timberlake. And what's the name of the song? Can't stop the feeling. Can't stop the feeling. There you go. And we already have a, a, a vocalist. She's already sang the song, um, sung the track for it. Cheryl Oliver. She's uh, also owns Coffee News, 
And uh, she sings <laughs> for The Dogs, which is a band, and they're really good. Remember, they, we were at that event where we recorded them on stage, The Dogs. Yeah, and on Exchange the, Street, The yeah, Arts Exchange. Arts Exchange, yeah. Yeah, right in downtown Bangor. And they were singing for, uh, they, they were part of the entertainment for a big, um, let's say a party or a fundraiser or something yeah. like that. I mean, it's, it's a cool space. That, it, yeah, that it's space a cool space. But the dogs show. were performing. This is the first time I saw uh, Cheryl perform, perform live. And I was just like, what? <laughs> this is right here in Bangor. This is crazy. Uh, so I convinced her to take part in, and be the vocalist for us in this music video. And we are gathering uh, businesses. Uh, we have a list of businesses that we're already going to be contacting. But if you think... You can replicate any of the dancers in the, the music video and you have a business, contact us and we'll decide if we have a spot for you in the video. Yeah, so, so remember that if you, if you haven't seen the video of Justin Timberlake's Can't Stop the Feeling, mm -hmm. uh, look at it and you'll see a lot of people dancing in front of different businesses. Right. Like there's a laundromat, there's a donut, donut shop. Donut shop, barber shop. Yeah. So it's a it's a cool project to do to get people aware of your business. Right. So so and we're coming out for free to shoot this to produce this and uh, we think it's going to be a fun project to get your business seen and to this is kind of our way of supporting local businesses yeah. because uh, get seen. We we know that everyone's going through some struggles because it's been two months of not being able to do anything with your business for majority of the people. Yeah. Um, would you have like the owner of the business dance? No. You can be the owner, but if you have someone that knows how to dance and you want them to dance in front of your your uh, business, you you can do that too. I think Tyler could dance in front of Seasons. That would be awesome. <laughs> Tyler Hafford, I bet he's got some. Let's moves. do it. <laughs> <laughs> he says he's going off on a Komodo dragon, takes on an alligator who wins the fight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right, Tyler, you, you're. Uh, talk to talk to your dad and see if he wants you to dance in front of him. Right, and we are we are starting our filming this week. Um, we already have uh, someone already performing a dance for, uh, for us. We have another business that's on board, and uh, we're excited to see what the end result will be. We'll come to your business. We're definitely going to stay uh, a safe distance from you. We're going to use our longer lenses to shoot most of this. So. Uh, even our shorter lenses, we're going to be more than six feet away from uh, people. Yeah, so don't fear getting... Uh, don't fear. If you want me to wear a infection. mask, I have actually a... My wife made me a Superman face mask, which is really cool. Does it have an S on it? It doesn't. Or is it the symbol? The, like the... Uh, it's, it's just a symbol, but I have also asked her to make me a, an Optimus Prime one. So it would look like Optimus for Prime Space. You know how all the Autobots, the yep, Transformers, they all have that. They all have face, that face. It's like a guard. Yeah. Face guard. Yeah, kind of like the Knight in Shining Armor. Yep. And have that guard. So of course, my idea was the Bane masks. Mm -hmm. If everybody wore the the mask that Bane, the bad guy, wore. Oh, you have that? No, I say I say we get some Bane masks. Tyler says we we're not ready. I'm assuming he he means we're not ready to see him dance. Like his moves are so dope. Well, well see, the thing is, <laughs> you guys can also um, invite members in the community that you know have moves to dance for you. Because the important thing is what we're displaying your business in the background. So that's the important thing. Yep. And we're entertaining people in the process. That's right. It. And we will need waivers signed by whoever is going to be yep. recorded. Yes. So be prepared to waive all your rights. <laughs> <laughs> all your rights are waived. All away. your rights. Um, <laughs> and, and we will be releasing this uh, on Quarantine Karaoke. Yes. And uh, you may see it there before you see, see it on our page. So like we might share it from quarantine karaoke some. Oh, sorry, hiccups. I had this really good breakfast this morning. If you saw, if you're on my, my friend on my wall, you saw the breakfast I had. It was a, a great dish uh, sent to me from my sister in California. So Adam, uh, I said Adam Walton's join us. Hey Adam, um, it is a like a hot chili paste is one. Uh, Part of the dish, she seasoned dried like small fish, and after it's dried, I deep fry it. It's so much better deep fried, and then uh, jasmine rice, and I had I made my regular no fried soy eggs with scallions in it, and um, I probably won't be hungry until dinner time. <laughs> Intermittent fasting. 
Yeah. Two well, meals a day. Yeah, it, that's just what I'm feeling. So um, those businesses, so if you know of a business that uh, is ready to rock and roll and have some dance moves, have them join us and we uh, contact us right on the fan page here and uh, or right on my Facebook uh, message and I will get you hooked up. We're doing our recordings this week. We're starting our recordings this week and uh, I'm excited about some of the dancers that we have. Some people really have some talent. And I cannot dance at all, <laughs> I, but I, I, I pretend that I dance. I can sometimes dance, but you took dance lessons, didn't you? you took yeah, but I lessons. forgot it all. Like, it's all formal dance, like the waltz and, you know, the... I see, I can't, I don't even know the names of them anymore. You like, should, you, you should, you should continue to dance with Heidi and, and really keep up with it. Gotta do it. We, you want me to bring the disco ball back and you guys can dance? No, that disco <laughs> ball is huge. <laughs> It would take up half the space. Yeah, I had a full size disco ball. Like you had to carry it like this, and, and pass it on. And I, he passed it on to me, and uh, I thought I was going to use it for the fantasy ball. Someday I'll use it for the fantasy ball. I'm not there yet, but pretty good size. Mm -hmm. So yes, we are taking. We, there's limited spots because we we're taking one dancer that represent each of the dancers in the video. Yeah, the so, businesses that are represented in, in that. Right, original. so we're only taking one per uh, to make sure that uh, we ma we can match frame per frame. And uh, what we're excited to see who joins us. Uh, yes. Hey, Kevin. He, Kevin just says, hey, guys. Thanks for joining us, Kevin. We're, we're just getting done talking <laughs> about the, the music video we're going to be putting together for Quarantine Karaoke. That's right. Tyler said we should use Joker face mask. Joker face mask. And he wants to hear a Taekwondo story. Uh, <laughs> oh, you want to hear my Taekwondo story? Go for it. All right. <laughs> Which one is it? He, the one that put me out for good. <laughs> oh yeah. I don't. Tyler. Tyler was around back then, but Tyler, you were like from the t from the table here, like tall. I think when that happened. <laughs> well, man, this was years ago. Um, I wanted to stay fit, and I didn't want to do. Like, I didn't want to run on a treadmill. I wanted to learn like a skill, you know, like Taekwondo. So I, I went in and tried it. I think uh, you convinced, someone convinced me to go that down That in 2008, 2009. Yeah. But, oh, no, it was before that. We were in the lower uh, gym or the lower studio of the YWCA back, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, where it's known the Bangor Y right now on 2nd mm -hmm. Street. Yeah. They have a lower studio where they do all the aerobic classes, no, all this, the fitness. This, That's yeah, where yeah, we this, were. Yeah, this was in Second Street. So yeah. it was that time period when that mm -hmm. was a multi-purpose uh, right. room. Right. I, I was uh, I was feeling good about myself there. I was I knew that I could improve and 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 things. Tyler like that. may have been there that day when you did that. You so may have been in the class. So we were doing a, a kicking thing. I, I think, and uh, I was doing good. I think, who, who was it that was holding it for me? I don't know, because I walked out of the room. I stepped out You're of the room. You're a photographer friend now. He's oh, a, Jason? Jason was there. Yeah, well, I stepped out of the room, and when I came back in, I was like. <laughs> I was on the ground. I was yeah, gone. everything looked good. The students are all interacting with him, and then yeah. I walk out of the room to get a sip of water or something, come back in, and you're on the ground complaining. So, of, so what it was is uh, I, I I was doing kicks and uh, on the on the pad, you know, one of those kick pad things, and he kept on raising it, and I and I, and I said, hey, you know, I I can do a back tuck. He says, do you think you could do a kick in the middle of the back tuck? <laughs> so I'm like, so Jason egged you on. <laughs> so I so I went I did a I went to do my back tuck and kick in midair, hit my target, landed, rolled my ankle, and I was down for like a week, so I couldn't get to work. And once I couldn't get to work, my wife's like, uh-uh, no more. Yeah, that was the last time we saw you. That was class. the last time you saw me. Good times, good times. <laughs> I still went by a few times, so when you guys were on Columbia Street to uh, do some photography, that was fun. And video. Yes, I remember that. Yeah. Because I still, I use those photos that you took for like years I, I had, for uh, promoting the Marshall U uh, nonprofit. I, well, that for me, I wanted to uh, support you any way I could, and that yeah. was one way I, I thought I, I could support you, because I thought you had something good going on. You were providing. You did have something good going on. You were providing a service for the community and for those that couldn't afford it, which was awesome. That was also the era you taught Jason how to use Flash. That and, was the first and time he learned yeah. how to use Flash, and then he just right. was out of here. 
Well, he was resistant at first. He says, oh, my camera's fine. And then, and then I like took my wireless trigger, put it on his camera, and he didn't turn back from then. Mm -hmm. He did not turn back after that because I'm like, yeah, well, you got a Nikon, I got a Canon. Let's see if we can make this work anyways. And, um, but now he's an awesome photographer down there. Well, actually, he doesn't do it as much anymore, but he's down in Florida now doing lots of off-camera flash stuff that, uh, that I was happy to share. That now I was so excited. I'm like, I know you don't want to learn, but I'm I'm gonna show you anyways. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, because yeah, I know once you learn it, you're gonna be like, holy crap, what the heck is this? I'm never going back. Yeah, uh, never. And that was the case, and he did. Tyler's did insisting on a, a Sean story. Oh yeah. Yeah. So uh, I just want to say hi to my uh, brother-in-law, Lai. He's on there, and uh, and Michelle, thanks for joining us. Uh, we j we just got done talking about uh, several interesting topics already. Yes. I'll tell I, I'm going to tell them an interesting sure. story. All right. This is not a, a whoop butt story. Like he wants like, if I'd gone around and like beat up on people in tournaments. Yeah. Um, I had a good, I had a good, uh, experience going to tournaments and competing. Never got, we never trained enough to, to get to like an Olympic level. Um, because the circuit kind of closed down shortly after I started. So I felt kind of bad for when we were training for Taekwondo, you know, for Taekwondo, mm -hmm. the, the tournament circuit was, you know, dwindling and dying and uh, we could still go to places and do the smaller tournaments like Bathmain and uh, every once in a while you go to Mass and, and hit a tournament. But one of the stories that sticks out in my head, it has nothing to do with tournaments. It's um, kind of miscommunication stuff when you're doing classes. So when you're doing classes, you get to you do a lot of drills with people. There's a lot of contact. Um, and I remember one day, this was before the Y on Hammond Street closed. We were up in the upper studio and uh, training in there. And I tell the story because it's a shout out to my friend, Brian. And uh, we had a, a miscommunication in class and it was embarrassing for, I think, the both of us. And uh, we were doing a drill where everybody circled around and you, we were going through different kicks on, on each other. And this is like a normal practice. And we got to doing a sacrifice spin hook kick. So each person would take, take their time to go around to the people in the circle and go to kick them towards the head and the person would block. You know, the kicks come in, you put your arm up and you block and then they move on. And it came to my turn. I went around the circle. I got to Brian and still to this day, we don't know exactly what transpired, but for whatever reason, either I didn't tell Brian uh, go or he wasn't ready or something like that. But when I did the kick, my foot slapped him in the face and it made a loud smack noise in the class and Brian just got enraged, <laughs> enraged. That little I, I can see that happening. Yes. So as a result of that one thing, Brian and I probably didn't speak for I think almost uh, ten years. Wow. I did not know that one. Yeah. So then we just recently, uh, you know, became friends again. Like we sat and we talked about that one moment mm. uh, and went over it for like two hours one night <laughs> and it was just an interesting that's it it's not a whooping butt story it's just a story of like it is a taekwondo story it's a taekwondo story you know because you have two friends who are uh training together and then boom just one little thing set them apart and then it took us that long to to like get back together i know that's like not a cool story or anything but <laughs> I thought it was cool because now it's a, it's a cool moral story. Yeah, now we're just the the moral is communicate mm -hmm. uh, soon. Don't let it go ten years. <laughs> Dan O'Connell has joined uh, us. Cool. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we're we're talking about some of our life experiences. You guys can actually direct what where our conversation goes just by commenting. Yeah, Tyler did. He and, says he uh, remembers that story. <laughs> I think you were there, Tyler. Uh, so Kevin Morneau asked, "Was Chase?" Uh, Pulsum, the instructor then? No, Chase uh, was not in the picture. They, uh, Chase left, if you know Chase Pulsum, uh, they had a school on Ban Air Drive, is where I started, him and Jamie uh, Smith. 
and Chase got into a car accident just before that uh, school closed down and uh, he was not involved after that. So when we shifted over to the Y again, because Chase was at the Y first, then went to Bay Air Drive, then uh, just some of the, ins the, the instructors went to the Y and just kind of kept it going. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, unfortunately Chase wasn't involved. Yeah. I, I, I don't remember who was who because it's been such a long time. Chase was like, he had blonde, very short hair, very, very uh, uh, verbal person, very loud, very easy to know that he was in the room. <laughs> <laughs> he was good too, Chase. Uh, if you're so kind of like me. <laughs> he was very good. He was very good at what he did and yeah. very articulate in how he explained things. I liked him as an instructor. Um, Jamie was great too. Um, but traditional arts started shrinking you know the, the whole the whole culture around it was changing and um it was good times all right experience that i can never replace it, it took me out of my introverted shell and brought me out because i ended up being a student and then an instructor and that completely changes your life because you have to address people you have to yeah show you, you that you know back. what you're doing yeah you can't sit back and just take it in yeah, it was very, that's why I did Marshall U because I was so grateful for that experience that I wanted other people to, to gain access to that opportunity to, to get that experience. Right. So yeah, Sean and I have this coaching background too. Uh, it seems like that's, we have quite a few things that kind of brought us together as human beings. Um, we're, you know, we like technology, both of us like technology and we, um, but just found we out like we, martial arts. We like martial arts. You know, I, I grew up idolizing Bruce Lee, uh, uh, Jackie Chan. Um, when when Jet Li came out, I was kind of not in that anymore. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like I wasn't influenced by like movies like that anymore. Like, not so, as much as not prior. as much as prior. Yeah. Um, so that was you no, know, and then you know, and then to find out that we were now in, into like alien stuff together <laughs> and i wasn't sure about jet lee when i first saw mm -hmm. him but man his his uh movie uh, it's called uh, the one i haven't seen that one that is an awesome movie by yeah. jet lee where he it's a multiverse story where there can be only one of you mm -hmm. but there's one of you in all these universes and if you go out and take out your other clones in the other universes, you get more powerful. Hmm. So he had to fight himself in this movie, and they did such an awesome job with the fight oh, scene. Now I have to go see it. It's, it's a really good movie. Talking about seeing movies, <laughs> something awesome is happening this Friday, right? So the Bangor Drive-In is opening up, and that's owned by the Bangor Mall Cinemas, and there's a few movies being played this weekend. Of course, you know that they're not playing brand new movie releases because no movies are being are produced right now. Yeah. Because Hollywood is shut down as well. Uh, because apparently actors can't be... Safe. Gravy train's over, actors. <laughs> Gravy train is over. So, if you are making movies on your own, this might be the time for you to shine to come up with some new materials. Uh, I, look, so what's playing this weekend is uh, Onward. It's also released. It's also on um, Disney Plus right now. Onward is an animated film. Yeah. Okay. I was gonna say yeah. it's an animated film. So th these people, they look like creatures from you know, you know mythical lands, but they're in regular life, like you know suburbia. So they're like regular. Anyways, um, there's more to the story. Find out for yourself on there. And there's Call of the Wild if you're if you under, remember the uh, the book. Um, it, it's I I heard it, it's a really good exactness or likeness to the book that was really popular. It's about uh, um, dog sledding in the Yukon Territory in no Alaska. Mm. Um, and also, uh, if you're an older crowd and likes things a little bit more exciting, there's. Uh, the, the Invisible Man, the, the Invisible Man, uh, the, by the way, Onward and Call of the Wild is playing Friday and Saturday, and May 15th and 16th, uh, The Invisible Man is playing. The, do you know if that's the original, or the is it like the newer Invisible Man, it's, I think Kevin Bacon? It, it's, it's the newer one, and it's supposed to be, uh, it's, it, it's, I, I heard it's quite raw. I wonder, what was the Kevin Bacon one, was it called The Invisible Man, or called Hollow or something? Maybe, maybe Hollow. But anyways, I think Kevin, Kevin's got something here to say. 
I used to train. Well, she he used to train with uh, Jamie Smith. Yeah, Jamie Smith and at Taekwondo uh, USA. Yeah. Um, he would go back and forth between Chase's. We would go back and forth between Chase's school and ours. You had your own school. That's cool. I have, see. We may be linked, Kevin, because uh, I well, I don't know what year you were in there. What what year? Because I came in in like uh, the end of two thousand and two. Like Dece it was December. 2002 is when I joined Chase and Jamie's school over on Bain Air Drive. Mm. And then three months later, this was so cool. Three months later, they had, they had trained me enough to be at a gigantic tournament in Massachusetts. So not knowing anything, three months later, I'm fighting in a tournament in <laughs> Massachusetts. That was the coolest thing ever. That's cool. That's cool. He also says, I... Mm, I think he means fun. I have a fond memory of helping Chase during an open house. We sparred and I got a nice foot in the kidney. <laughs> ah, oh, okay. This is another story. This, this <laughs> triggers another story. And oh, wait, I'll finish it. This is out. He was out for like a month during our reading session for the Colorado and Red Belt Extravaganza. Who was out, Kevin or Chase? I think it's Kevin. Chase got you in the kidney? I think that's what it is. Sounds like it's his iPhone memory. He's borrowed. And I got, yeah, I got a foot in the kidney. So he, okay. so Kevin got a foot in the kidney. So don't feel bad, Kevin, because I got a foot right in the old package. <laughs> and that put me in the hospital. Oh, no. Like I got a back kick right in the bladder. And I was bleeding from my bladder. Oof. So I had to go to the hospital. They, did a uh, catheter and I had to sit there and wait for the blood to stop and mm. so, but then I was right back to training. Wonderful times. <laughs> Wonderful times. Wonderful. That's a story for you right there. <laughs> one kick, I was in the hospital. Yeah, it's amazing how like one... Right in the moving. right place. Yeah. It just collapsed my bladder and rubbed the walls together, the mm -hmm. bladder walls. Yeah. And that was the end of that. Whew. Man. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know until I got home, and I was peeing blood. <laughs> that sucked. <clears throat> so, <laughs> so as you all know, Sean and I are both small business owners. So we like to talk a lot about small businesses um, and how small businesses are. Kind of today, I want to talk about how small businesses are very creative and innovative in in getting through this COVID nineteen uh, crisis, and. Uh, it's amazing when when you give businesses a glimmer of hope to do something that they're able to come up with solutions and uh, and some of these solutions may not be perfect off the bat. I mean, how many times have you done something for the first time and it's perfect off right off the bat? Almost never. Almost never. I mean, wait all the time. I don't mess <laughs> up at all. So um, so I, perfect. I try not to. Um, discourage these businesses when the, when they're not like perfect at what they're doing. Uh, I mean, you hear the news uh, all the time when, when people uh, just kind of lose their cool because businesses don't have things together yet because... No. They're people. They're people. It's people behind the scenes trying to figure things right, out. Trying to figure things out and when things are changing daily. Yeah. And things are changing daily for us and that, that that's happening. Um, I mean, for instance, uh, there's a business that's... Uh, well, businesses that are opening up... Um, I think in in Rockport, Rockland area, they're having an air market. So they're bringing their stores outside because as we know that air is, is a natural disinfectant mm -hmm. um, and people can still, there'll be more room to social distance as well. So I'm anxious to see how well that goes. And I think I'm going to take a drive down there and see what it's all about. Nice. Might take some pictures and, and share it on our fan page um, as well. And then... <laughs> he's so making a still going correction. On. Yeah, he's still making a correction. Um, so he, yeah, it's a, a re training, not reading. He must be doing voice to text. <laughs> <laughs> so um, and people like like, I mean, not everybody is for the cocktails to go thing, but that's pretty inventive on how how businesses are able to make it so it's sealed well enough to to travel home and all that good stuff, um, and. I think if you allow businesses to do these things, it's just amazing what they come up with 
to to make sure that they make their ends meet. And yeah, and the like restaurants doing the meal prep kits the, for the, home. Oh my goodness! I, I so I got switching one. over that and making raw, putting the raw ingredients in a box. Right. And you buy it. We we have tried uh, we have tried uh, some of those meals in a box. Um, yeah. Food service, just just to try it out, and it's it's awesome to know that we can do this with some of our local businesses and cook those food ingredients already at, um, put together for us at home. And they're really simple recipes. Too. Yeah. And well, I like to cook, so it's not a big deal for me. But to I have think, all the ingredients, just mm -hmm. here's all the ingredients, just make it. It's very, it's very easy to not have to think about what, what goes with what. Hey, Matt, Matthew Step is Matt Step, Matt, join us. He, this guy's cool. He, uh, he also uh, works for United Way of Maine, but he also designs custom furniture. He's awesome. He's good at what he does, like high end stuff, really high quality uh, furniture, mm. like, like tables and stuff like that. But I want a desk that looks like the cockpit of a jet. <laughs> <laughs> so when I'm sitting at it, <laughs> yep. So I want you. I want one of those Segway S pods to pull me into the into the desk. I'll talk about that later. Talk about that. <laughs> yeah. So so that is um, I. I just want to give you a list of counties uh, that are um, that, that have been allowed to reopen their retail business. Um, I know that some people are really anxious to get to the stores and actually see things in real life instead of buying things on Amazon. Yeah. And uh, oh, or going online, any shopping site. Um, but Amazon, we do that all the time. <laughs> you know that because you do that yourself. I buy tons of stuff through uh, Amazon. Buying, but some not lately though because a lot of the people have raised their caught their prices have you seen that happen oh absolutely it's especially the fba sellers the, the sellers that are they're doing fulfilled by amazon because mm -hmm. that's a whole industry in itself mm -hmm. a lot of those guys because their stock was running low raised their prices so you saw a lot of prices just go up on things and then of course amazon delayed shipping you, the prime doesn't mean anything anymore right right, now. right. yeah um, I, I just placed in some orders uh, for like yard signs for my you know, my seniors and stuff like my graduate graduates and it's taking forever to to get shipment um, and it's it's like double the time I'm yep. like, why is it taking so long and now now some of the things I've like already passed so I feel really bad for for some of those things that are going on um, cause that's one of the few things I can do without being in direct contact with my clients is to design signs for them. So that's what I've been doing. Um, uh, as so small businesses, like that was an example of a small business, uh, kind of rolling with the times and being creative and inventive on, uh, on how to do things. So I, there's a list of uh, 12 counties that are opening up retail stores. I think as of yesterday, yesterday was the first day they opened them up and, uh, Aroostook County. Potato Country, they're opening up. So check them out, Piscataquis, Washington, Hancock, Lincoln, Sagadahawk, Somerset, Franklin, Oxford, Kennebec, Waldo, and Knox County. Now I'm assuming all these counties have lists of businesses, their types that they're gonna allow. Yeah. Opening, or is it just like free for all? Just uh, it's retail can, right now. Just it's, retail? That's a list of retail, that, that's, that's for retail stores that are allowed to open right now. Yeah, because you know, if you're supplying a service like a massage place or mm -hmm. uh, well, some massage places are chiropractors, open. Chiropractors, dentists. Yeah. I, I know chiropractors are open because my wife goes to um, Back and Balance on okay. St Stillwater in Bangor. Uh, Dr. Rob's really cool there. Dr. Dan's cool as well. Just want to let you guys know. If you need some adjusting, go check them out. Yep. Um, but they're they've been open and, and deemed essential as well because it's part of health. Um, and some massage, uh, services are a part of therapeutic massages mm -hmm. services, part of that as well. But anyways, so I know that people really are itching to actually walk in the stores and see physical products and not just going online and seeing it. I think, um, I think a lot of people will be happy and taking lots of trips to many of these different businesses that are in the surrounding communities. Um, of course, Penobscot County is not in the mix because we're uh, we're considered uh, the the virus is still communal uh, in our area and uh, we're like a hot spot. Not not or quite what? Not, not quite a hot spot, meaning that it's still being passed from person to person mm -hmm. in some way. That's that's still a a, a risk. 
but uh, the hot spot is more like southern Maine. Um, I mean, the Bangor area really hasn't seen that much of that. Uh, the issue uh, as what I've seen as as far as I've seen but of course that is my personal opinion I am not a doctor a scientist or anything like that so just want you to be aware of that but so let us know what businesses you are anxious to go visit this week that yes. are opening up and and let me let us know also if you guys are going to go to the drive-in and see any of the movies um, just to get out, just to get outside. Yeah, just to get outside. I mean, these Even are... Even though you're going to be in your car. Yeah. Oh, Michelle says she's only been able to go to Walmart. <laughs> oh, I haven't even been in a Walmart yet. It's been a while since I've been at, at a Walmart. Because so, the lines. Right. And uh, Sam, uh, Sam uh, Hammond has joined us. She and I have some history. We worked at Channel 5 together way back in the day. Uh-huh. Uh, she she was at, uh, came in and control. I was a production's assistant, so I ran around. Uh, in the morning, I worked with uh, Joy Hollowell and, uh, and John Small in the morning show. And uh, I would, you know, during the weather, for, uh, Storm Center, I'd be there early in the morning. I would help with the, the timing of the teleprompter and the studio cameras at the time and running scripts to them and stuff like that. So that was my job as a, as a PA. And Samantha was so fun to work with at Channel 5, I miss those days. Uh, I'm glad I don't do it anymore. <laughs> uh, early <laughs> stuff would kill me. Early, too early, early for me. me. Um, and uh, being around news is not always fun either, but the people that I worked with were terrific. Yeah, and I still. Get a, I think if you got a good crew, they can make anything fun. Yeah, no, I, I had a really good time. Till this day, I still have a pretty good relationship with John Small, Joy Hollowell, and uh, and Samantha, the, the people that I was around a lot when back then. Uh, Rod, Rodney Barrel actually did the hiring process with me. Rodney uh, uh, also is a uh, a instructor professor at Hudson University, so he he teaches. He worked at Nescom a lot too, mm. so. It's kind of like right in the area. It's kind of training the people to go work at these new stations. Yeah, in some yep. ways. But, Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, let us know if you guys are going to go into the movies, if you're excited about any of the stores opening up. And um, the, the movie thing, uh, they're not playing any new movies. It's just movies that, have, that, that they have already have done because Hollywood isn't producing anything new. But the great thing about this is all the movies that you've missed... Then you're like, oh man, I didn't. I think you go to see that, and you want to see it on the big screen, and just to get out, that's a fun way to do it. They should do Star Wars again on the big screen. That would be fun. The original three. I, I would go. Yeah. I would go. The original three. I would, I would watch all nine of them. <laughs> that's, I, I, that's excessive. Not on one day, but yeah. I, would, I would go Woo. back and watch all nine of them, or or the Marvel movies. I would go watch them because that would that would be fun to me. Um, I, I just uh, I haven't read any details yet about how they're doing concessions because um, I know that's how they make a, a majority of their money is through the concession stands. Mm -hmm. So yes. I'm wondering if they're going to go to the cars, have have wait staff or whatever, or, or have food set aside for you place orders ahead of time. Yep. Like popcorn, popcorn's a big deal, you know. That's a big seller. Um, that that I have to look into. If anyone of our audiences know whether or not they are, um, uh, what they're doing about their concessions, let us know so we can spread the word. Man, concessions or, I don't know if they'd be even into it, but collaborating with a, a catering service or Ooh, a local yeah. uh, restaurant to, mm -hmm. to provide food to the people and take a share of that revenue. Yeah, that, that would be interesting if that was a possibility. Yeah, I don't know if they'd even consider doing something like that. Right, it, just, just because... Uh, a, they're already taking a hit yeah. uh, that they, they may want all of that concession, <laughs> uh, um, you know, money coming. But if they could double their output. Yeah. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. Especially if, if there's a huge wait for all the food and, and I product. was going to be. Yeah, there will be. I know that the, I'm pretty sure the, the drive-in is going to be packed full um, this week. Yeah, just pre people want to get out. People want to get so out. Just want to get out. They do. Talking about that, did you notice traffic yesterday? Were you out yesterday? No, I never left the house yesterday. Traffic yesterday was so like normal. Like, you know, before mm -hmm. pre-COVID-19, it was so like busy. I was really surprised. Um, we, we went out uh, for lunch 
Um, and then because we were going to go to the park, we, we picked um, some sandwiches up at Chick-fil-A and the traffic was amazing. I'm like, wow, this feels normal. <laughs> and it's a Monday. You're like feeling good because there's traffic jams <laughs> yeah, and you can't get to where you're going. It was. Like, it, All right, this is normal. So, so to me, it felt so normal that it was so it was welcoming uh, to to see some of the the activity that's going on there. Mm. Uh, we went to um, we went to the University of Maine uh, to check out Littlefield Gardens, and there, you know, it, it was it was open to the public. Uh, some of the things were in bloom there, and we stopped at Dairy Queen for some ice cream, and. Up there, traffic felt normal, minus the um, the college traffic, because that makes a huge difference. <laughs> uh, I mean, I think they, the the population grows by like fifteen thousand or something like that with the university opening. And that, I can imagine. That being said, I mean, how are these? You know, I, I I mean, I feel bad for businesses in general, but these college towns rely so much on. And that revenue from the kids right. going out and yeah kids uh, are young adults yeah but they're gone you know yeah. they're they're not there there's a, they're, the population has shrunk uh in the, those communities so um i i feel i feel bad for them too but done feeling bad i want to give a review about my rental last week do it go for it so um we had to rent a car because our van was getting fixed at Labs Garage in Orrington. Labs is awesome. Check him out. Shout out, shout out to him. <laughs> that business. Yeah. Uh, he, he's totally professional, knows what he's doing, and he's usually like right within budget. Like every time. Um, but anyways, uh, we rented a car from Avis. Uh, we got a, uh, an upgrade. I went for e Econo because I just didn't want to spend any money because I'm like, we just need it for an emergency, you know, type of thing. And what did you get for a vehicle? We got a, um, a Mitsubishi um, Highlander Sport. Sounds cool. It sounds cool. <laughs> it looked cool. It looked cool. <laughs> and what did, how did it ride? It rode well when you're by yourself. So um, we took the family to... Um, to Oh my goodness, Scudic Point, mm -hmm. and found out that it was grossly too small of a space for a family of uh, with four people in the car, with drinks and and loading things to to go and enjoy a location, and uh, so it wasn't enough room for for us as a family. Might be enough room for me and my wife. That's about it. It I should have known better because it had sport in the name. Well. And then, um, I mean, it had uh, it had good cornering ability. We went around curves. It just felt like we were flat the whole time, didn't feel any roll and stuff like that. But then when you had to get out of Dodge quick, it wouldn't move. It was just like, <clears throat> it has this eco boost. And because of the eco boost, it will not allow that gasoline to flow freely into the engine to really get the power I needed out of the vehicle to get so it's like a four cylinder thing it felt like a four cylinder but I th you think it's a v6 I think it's a v6 but it <laughs> felt like a four cylinder it, it felt it made me feel like my minivan had a lot of power and I'm like are you kidding me are you kidding me you know so um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna recommend that car I mean it had a lot of like fun little toys. I mean, it didn't have a spot for my my cell phone, my my, my smartphone or anything like that. Uh, it did have a good infotainment center where you can actually communicate uh, with your phone, ongoing hand, hands-free and stuff like that. But it was just really, um, I wouldn't recommend it. All right, there you have it. So, don't, don't get one of the Mitsubishi Sport little mini SUVs. Right, it, it was just I, I felt like in a sardine can, I, and I'm a, I'm not a big guy. I'm I think I'm pretty small. Dude, you're huge. You're Jack, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I might be broad, but I I'm, I'm a short dude, and 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 I felt cramped. I felt cramped in that space. But anyways, that was the Mitsubishi Highlander Sport. I don't recommend that car. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 the car sucked. To, 
I'll have to try other cars. I, I'd love to do car reviews. That would be fun. Huh? Just to have a couple, a few uh, oh, that would be fun. GoPros in and, and test some cars. That would be fun. Yeah, have some suction cup mounts. Just get in the car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go for it. Yeah. Hey, Amy, thanks for joining us again. This is uh, we're, we're just talking about car rentals. <laughs> That's right, which leads into some of the... Well, personal transportation. Yeah, because one of my things is like finding gadgets. Okay, right? yeah. Because I like to find gadgets that. to talk about. So we are chatting about uh, some single real personal transport devices that are currently out that you can actually buy. And there's a couple in concept, uh, like the concept uh, stage. And um, I wanted to show one that was pretty interesting. It's by Rhino Motors. And this has been out for a little bit, but sometimes like me, I, I'm not like in, in the knowledge or the know of everything that's out. So sometimes you don't know. And sometimes you don't want the first generation of everything. You definitely don't want the first generation. You, you, want, the, you want them to refine it a little bit first. So this is cool because it's, a, it's a, like a single tire motorbike see one wheel one wheel and i'll show you right here uh i'll just show their their little uh intro video of this thing it, it's got a gyro in it that self balances mm -hmm. and you basically ride it around it's i think it's limited to 12 miles per hour right now at the moment <clears throat> but this guy rides this thing all over the place single wheel now there's a couple other like uh chinese versions of uh something like this but this is like, it's big. It's like pretty huge. That tire is like the size of a car tire. Yeah, it does. Look, uh, but uh, it's, it's very futuristic, yeah. I think. I think it had a range of like 20, 25 miles mm -hmm. on a charge. Um, but yeah, I think it'd be kind of cool to tool around. With, I don't know if somebody in uh, Maine has something like this they tool around on. Like uh, we, around we, we'd love to come shoot a video about it. That'd be awesome. Yeah, so they had this. Uh, and then, of course, that leads into some of the other things that are out like this. Uh, Moto Pogo. This is another uh, device. I guess it's like a po pogo stick type uh, motorized pogo pogo Yeah, stick. so it's another single wheel vehicle, mm -hmm. but electric vehicle that you zip around on. And it's also got it's a gyro in it that keeps it self-balancing. So it's supposedly pretty easy to get on and go. These things are available now. You can buy them. They're seventeen hundred bucks. And then of course this you can also find uh, like on some of the uh, import sites. Ooh, not that one yet. <laughs> like here's one that looks like the Moto Pogo for eight hundred bucks plus shipping. You know you order it direct from overseas. Um, but these things are everywhere. These single wheel like unicycle type. Uh, I haven't seen. I haven't seen any in Maine yet. I haven't seen anybody on one either. So yeah. it leads me into thinking, you know, would they would they be okay for around here? And then you know, there's some other other styles. They got some cool looking <laughs> some cool looking versions yeah, of this bad yeah. boy. Uh, where's that? The super bike. That, that that one's supposed to be all terrain. Yeah, off road. Fourteen hundred bucks. This thing looks like an old timey like Indian motorcycle. Yeah, like, definitely looks like, like a just, Harley Davidson style. Yeah. Yeah, some kind of framing going on there, and then that leads me to the Segway, uh, which is basically like a car seat that self balances. It's and, like a, an uh, adult <laughs> car seat to you me. You ride it around. It's like I feel like I I should be having a binky in my mouth on that one. Yep. So yeah, it picks you up, and we watched a little video of it earlier. Yeah. It basically picks you up, balances on the two wheels, and then it can go up to 25 miles per hour. How do you steer on that one, anyways? Do you know? It's little uh, little joystick. controls, little joystick controls on okay. the on the armrest. Alrighty. And uh, it looked very stable, you know, when we were watching the guy uh, demo it. Until he like crashed into something. Well, yeah, I'm not. <laughs> I don't know. Eventually, if you've ever seen the movie Wall E. Yes. Yeah. Then you'll know that the technology that was in the ship of people, they were all being carted around by these hovering chairs where everything was catered to them. And a lot of people are making that uh, link between this and that uh, technology. I wonder what that would do with people's fitness and health. I'm not sure. I mean, I see this. This would be great for folks that 
are able to move around right, freely, so, so like okay. a replacement for say a wheelchair, or something, right? A wheelchair or, or those motorized scooters. Motorized scooters. This is this because this leans forward and it lets you get out of it pretty easily. So when I first saw this, I thought, well, this would be cool if it was one of like it rep, uh, it kind of replicates some of those uh, rickshaws, you know, that they had back in back in the homeland of love. Yeah, you just Thailand. take the guy that pulls it away, right? So the, this is the rickshaw without the dude in right, front. Right, without the <laughs> dude in front. So but everything else is like the rickshaw except for the dude in front. Yep. They should have like a sound effect that is like somebody running or a horse uh -huh. or something. Or, or, <laughs> cluck, 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 cluck. Right. Or, or you can have a, what, what do you call those, uh, when you project a, a being in front of you that's not there. Oh, like a hologram? Oh, like a hologram, a hologram. yeah. A hologram of, of you can choose Whatever. a hologram. Whatever you like, want. You go like, choose, today I like to be pulled by, you know, this person or this animal or this creature. And then you can choose that and then the, the hologram will be there. And it, I think that would be cool. It might be cool. I don't know how much this is going to go for. It, does, it's, it it's, doesn't have a price yet? I don't think it's out yet. Okay. It's still like being developed. They've got prototypes of this. This is, this is I think, is the prototype, one of the prototypes of it. I would try it. Another, another vehicle that, that I'd probably uh, offer to shoot a video on. Yeah. I, I do think eventually, and I don't know what your feeling is, that people are going to have all these things, these little two-wheel devices, and they're going to be zipping around downtown. Yeah. You know, rather than walking, they're going to be... I, I think they would have to change the downtown so that there's a separate road for that like a little personal transport lane yes Just yeah <laughs> yeah personal transport lane uh there there are towns um in the u.s that have uh roads just for pedestrians and bikers uh, that zip through town yep. a lot of these are more touristy towns of course uh where they're used to having a lot of foot traffic and things like that but i think that would be terrific to add. To, to have like a separate. But I think some of these, like, uh, where is it? That other one. This one, like, I would think that would go anywhere. Oh, yeah. It, it's, it's. Like, I'd it's, drive that downtown. I would, that, yeah. Go on the sidewalks with it. Yes, like, and, and people are taking it inside their their offices. That thing. It fits in the elevator and all that good stuff. Who wouldn't want to, who wouldn't want to like go around on that? And then you could get all decked out in like leather and chaps. I, I would try to put chaps on. I would try to wear something <laughs> futuristic to, to go along with the No design. way. You, you get one of those helmets that has the spike on it, like the half helmets and you get on this thing. Hi Felicia, <laughs> thanks for joining us. Sorry, I, uh, we, we are just getting off on like personal transportation here. Yep. And Derek Hill just joins us. He says, what's up guys? Hey Derek. Derek, what's going on? So yeah, I think this is a really cool uh, personal transportation vehicle, and I would be more than happy to try it out. Yeah, I th I could see Derek. By the way, I could see Derek trying one of these out. Man, so, he was in a motorcycle. Derek, you were in the motorcycles in the old days. We should get one and just try it out. That was how much is this thing? What's the return policy on that? I don't know. It's, <laughs> it's fourteen hundred bucks for yeah. this bad boy. Yeah. yeah. Well. Let, uh, Let's, let's, what's the return policy that. so that we can go and, and try it, shoot a video, and then return it? <laughs> Jeez. I mean, it looks cool. I, I kind of want to check it out. Mm. We wouldn't do that. We'd no, probably, we wouldn't we, we, it. We, we'd probably get attached to it and be like, Thousand all right, we'll, we'll do a timeshare. Look at that. It's got a little digital. Ooh, uh, yeah, yeah, kilometers per hour. Nice. We're not in any way advocating for any of these uh, manufacturers or Yeah, we don't products. even know what the insurance would be like. Would that be like a moped? I don't know. Or like a bike. Or like a, a bicycle. Bike, a bicycle or a scooter, motorized scooter. I know my daughter's been wanting the, the $300 uh, motorized scooters, the electric scooter. Not, yeah, not motorized, but yeah. It is a little headlight, that's cute. Yeah, there you go. Very cool indeed. All right, so that was my tech. Thing. But I, I like this a lot better than those people converting their bikes into these like motorized things. With a combustion so engine. So loud, um, so loud and annoying. There's there's one in our neighborhood. It's just so loud. Yeah, and they barely go like. Yeah. Meh, and they're just going like five miles <laughs> yes. an hour. You can totally pedal faster than that. Yeah, they could. That engine is they could. tugging you along. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. All right. All right. I have a oh. Maybe you can bring it up for me. I don't know. What do you got? Uh, the the EOS R's um, adapter, uh, lens adapter. So I want to talk about that because I am going to be picking up an EOS R Canon um, through some of our friends at the local. Um, it, it's the the one with the variable lens filter. Is four hundred bucks for it. Four hundred bucks. Yeah. If you can. 
go on. Uh, this one right here. Look like that Canon drop-in filter. Right. So, Sold that vintage photo online. So it's four hundred dollars. <laughs> That's my only problem with it. I mean, that looks pretty cool. It's it's uh, there's a couple of really good reasons for why I wanted to get this, and so you nice. might want to consider getting it yourself if you have an EOS R. Is that it's it's this adapter makes all your EF and EFS lens compatible with it. So I've been shooting with uh, EFS lenses for a long time. I, I also have some EF lenses as well, but you won't have to change and buy all these new lenses built for the EOS R, which are all around $2,000. Yeah, holy cow, whole new uh, interface for a lens. Right, I mean, I could, I could get any of the other adapters, but this one comes with uh, a neutral density filter uh, which in this variable, which means I can change yeah, how dark. Yeah, plus and minus there. Right, I can change how dark or light that that uh, lens filter is, and it makes it compatible with every single lens I put on the mount. So it doesn't matter what lens I put on that that's compatible with the EF or EFS lens uh, uh, that goes on the mount. It will turn that compatible with regardless of the focus ring size. Yeah. Because it's because it's on the back end of the the lens. And it'll not, be nice if this is also compatible with it. Yeah. So the R five that they're they're coming out coming with, out with. Uh, would be very smart of them to 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 make that because for the price of four hundred bucks, <laughs> I hope it it lasts longer than just one model or two yeah. models of of lenses. But the the idea of the neutral density lens is that when it's a bright day out and I'm shooting low f stop, I can still have good shallow depth of field without having to shoot at uh, the shutter speed of one two thousands or four thousands because I'm shooting su such a wide open aperture. And uh, when I'm shooting video, that's when it comes into play. I want to be able to shoot, you know, uh, six, 60 frames per second or 120, uh, 120 or 30 or whatever it is that I want. And, and when you have it too bright out, yeah, because sometimes, yeah, you're right. When when the sun is blasting and you mm -hmm. want to shoot at like f two point eight, mm -hmm. you know, to get a nice shallow depth of field with a blurry background, it, what are you gonna do? It'd you, be all there's only so many things you yeah. can do. You can lower your ISO to to whatever the lowest it Minimal, can go, hundred yeah. or fifty on right. the Sony, right? And then the last thing you have is shutter speed, right? And then if you're doing video, you don't want that any more than two times, right? you know, what your video frame rate is gonna be. Right, so for instance, the, uh, the normal film frame rate is 24 frames per second. So an average- For cinematic. Uh, for cinematic, cinematic. Uh, framing. So you don't wanna to shoot too much more than 50 frames per second yeah. to, to get a good look on your frame. And, um, and the, the, the problem uh, is when you have bright light and you don't wanna shoot at a higher uh, shutter speed because everything's gonna look like Saving Private Ryan where you know there's fighting everything just looks like it's stro strobotic yes kind of already strobe so it's actually good for like fighting scenes and stuff like that to add energy to the scene but when you're uh when you're shooting something cinematic something basic or a headshot interview type thing talking head you want to make sure that uh it's shot at a pleasant frame rate so it doesn't look like they're like in action mode yeah pleasant being motion blur is right within the frames because mm -hmm. if something's not motion blurred it doesn't look natural no it doesn't natural if you your your brain perceives motion blur because of right you know, your things eyes. moving you you're not constantly focused on one thing and you perceive motion blur so when you watch a good movie, they will do it at a low frame rate to uh, add that motion blur in. Mm -hmm. And it makes it natural, like you're just looking through your eyes. Right, sorry for the choppy video, guys. We're gonna work on that for the next broadcast. Uh, it looks like it's more from my camera. So I'll probably be putting a different camera on to go for Facebook Live next yeah. time. My my uh, my phone. My live stream comes from an iPhone. Yes. Uh, maybe I'm using an Android, a Samsung Android. Yeah, maybe I need to upgrade to. Yes, upgrade. Get the Samsung Ultra 20 Mega Super S with 108 megapixels. Is that better than an iPhone? I, I don't know. I, no one has one, so I can test it out. <laughs> well, I might consider it. I might consider it because it. I, I'm upgrading some of my gear so that I can do more with my business. So if I can justify it as a business expense, I will get it. Then we can play with <laughs> it. Do a review play. on it. Do a review on it. Yeah. 
So yeah, and the next time we, we can actually launch this on our Facebook fan page, uh, our Facebook Live versus um, on our personal page. We started on our personal page just so we can build a, somewhat of a following first, but I think we have enough people on our fan page now to, to get started and launch there. Yeah, and also just in case anybody is wondering, all these uh, broadcasts or lives that we do, we're also recording in 4K and we upload them to YouTube afterwards. So this, the Facebook Live is, to my opinion, just a horrible quality. Yeah. The audio goes out of sync, so by the time we're done, there, it's like one of those bad uh, Kung movies, Fu Kung Fu films. movies, yeah. where the lips aren't mashing up with the yeah. words. So go to our YouTube channel, uh, Average Joe Daily Show, mm -hmm. and you can watch the 4K. And version. we'll also be uh, adding a link to all our U uh, 4K YouTube videos to our fan page at Average Joe Daily Show on Facebook. Yes, so you'll you'll have access to the better quality. This is just to get the interactions so that we can... Right, because we, uh, we love getting the interactions and you guys actually really decide which way our conversation go. And we love uh, we love getting you guys on and talking about talking shop. Random stuff. So, oh, Random I don't know if Dave Quirk joined. I don't know how soon he joined, but uh, it would have been great for him to chime in when we were talking about transportation. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. So, <laughs> so, uh, You'll be Dave, like, Subon, don't be so hard on the Mitsubishi. <laughs> do you have anything? Do you have anything that is uh, that can really outdo the Mitsubishi Highlander Sport? Because I was so disappointed in the unimpressed. I'm totally impressed with impressed. The Mitsubishi Highland Sport. I was not impressed with that on my rental. So, um, so I'm sure there's plenty of cars in the Quirk uh, parking lot that that would outdo that. But I. It, it, it had the look and the appeal and all that stuff, but then once you, you know, you got in, you're like living it for More a week. Off quick. Well, after living in it for a week, you kind of get a really good idea of uh, whether or not it, it's something you can live with. All right, what else you got? Uh, that is pretty much all I have uh, because I, I skipped ahead of time, okay. I got ahead of myself, and spoke about my music video towards the beginning. All right. Well, I got a tip. Uh, so as everybody probably knows, and if you don't know, I work in the IT industry. Um, I help people, small businesses with their computers. And I kind of threw out a tip here and there uh, towards the end of the, uh, the live stream, just to help people get around on their computers mm -hmm. and be productive. And one of the things I still to this day run into is people who are unfamiliar, just unfamiliar with navigating around their own computer, you know, and I'm speaking in the Windows world, the Windows realm, but it goes for Mac as well. So like, say you, you, you tell someone to go find a file, open up Finder mm -hmm. and find the, and get this file and what's Finder mm -hmm. and that's on their own Mac. Yeah. Or you tell somebody that uses Windows hey, open up Windows Explorer or File Explorer now that it's called in Windows 10 mm -hmm. and look for this file. And they're like, what's that? Mm -hmm. So I just want to give a couple of tips on um, getting around the windows that you see on the screen and navigating in the operating system. Because uh, it's just, it's interesting to me and it's, it's one of those things that I think it's uh, great to know how to get around on the computer. Because most people, they get their PC, the icons that they need to get into, the programs are right there. They never have to go beyond the desktop. So I'm like, oh, well, if I want to get in my browser, I just click the, the icon on the desktop. They don't know that, you know, down in the lower corner, they can go to this menu and bring up any program that's installed on there. So lower corner, uh, this launch menu is the menu for Windows. But I just had a couple specific tips, and that is to move your windows around or get them out of your face. So if you've got a lot of uh, productivity going on, if you're like me, like uh, for example, I've got Chrome open. Uh, I might have Chrome, I might have Edge, because I'll use multiple browsers. And then I might have, oh, I don't know. Um, I usually have like a Finder window open or something. Like yeah, that. my notepads open yeah, somewhere. Yeah, my, my, my notepads open. You know, because well. I'll be like jotting down notes or, or yeah. Word, Microsoft yeah, Word. This happens all the time. I have or you would have windows. pages like uh, on the Mac, it's pages, I think, yeah. uh, to have mm -hmm. that. So I've got all these windows open. I might even have 
file explorer in Windows because I'm looking for uh, documents that I'm, I'm working with. Uh, so I have all these windows and one of the quick tips that I'm gonna give everybody is for Windows is if you wanna get everything out of the way really fast, but you only wanna focus in on one window, you can grab the title bar with your mouse. A lot of people don't, uh, aren't familiar with being able to move these windows around by the title bar. And the title bar is that bar that's at the very top of any window that's in Windows. You can grab that and move your windows around, okay? If you grab that and then shake it, everything goes away except for that one window you're working with. So if, you've got your, if everything's cluttered on the screen, and you just want to quickly get everything out of your face, just grab the title bar of whatever you want to work with and shake it. And then you can also do this a whole different way. I'm going to bring all these back up. Get the segue going on. We got notepad here. So we got all these windows in our face. Okay, there's a little button down here in the lower right corner of your taskbar. This bottom bar is called your taskbar. You'll see a little line, a vertical line down here. Over to the right of that, if you click that, it gets rid of everything. That, that minimizes all your windows. Okay, another method, and these are, these are just quick tips because a lot of people don't know how to do these simple things and I want to help people get a little more productive. So now we got a bunch of windows going on here. On the keyboard, you have this awesome Windows key, the logo key. That key is tied to a bunch of shortcuts. If you go Windows logo key D, it minimizes everything for you again. So that's three different ways you can get stuff out of your face to work with on the screen. Now I'll show you another quick tip here. You've got a bunch of windows open. On the keyboard again, this is a famous one that's been around for like almost ever. The Alt key and Tab will bring up a menu that you can toggle between whatever window you wanna focus on. So you're here, you wanna go back to the Canon and then let go and it's focused on that one window. So that's pretty cool. That's cool. And there's a lot, there's a lot of shortcuts that go with that Windows logo key. Mm -hmm. And if you're interested in those, I'll do a little segment on that. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I need a refresh. <laughs> All right then. All right, so, so that's my quick tip. Do a little bit of navigation to get the windows out of your face and go between them. So that was uh, you know, that was great information. Um, Mac has similar tools, um, but while you were talking, it reminded me that I was able to help give uh, people tips uh, because everyone are uh, everyone's been staying home more because of, of the uh, pandemic. Um, people are starting their own YouTube channels. Uh, well, I got, we are. I got three. I got three that I'm <laughs> working with right now. Right. So uh, you're working with three of your own or uh, clients? Two of my own: Marshall U, Bass Micro, and now The Daily Show. Okay. Cool. Yes, that's right. I knew you had those other two as yep. well. But um, but people are out. Uh, they're wondering what cameras to buy for their own uh, YouTube, uh, kind of like YouTube studio, home studios. So we're gonna. I think we're gonna address some of that a little bit um, ourselves uh, for people because people are actually <laughs> calling me. Check my live feed. <laughs> people are calling me and asking me, "Hey, what's a what's a good uh, camera for streaming YouTube? Um, what should my setup be and, and and layout and all that good stuff?" And um, I had a particular question this past week, and it's about um, what camera. Well, I. There's a lot of nice cameras out there, especially if you have a decent budget for uh, an, another camera. And there's a lot of nice used gear that's available as well. Um, and all I suggest is for anything YouTube related, uh, get a camera that has a good autofocusing system. Um, so there's lots of cameras out there with great autofocus systems like uh, Sony, uh, Canon, Nikon, and um, Pentax. But uh, I, I would have to say the, the, the dual pixels on the Canons uh, do a very good job in making sure you, you get focus. Mm. Uh, so, so video focusing is an issue and had been an issue for a long time for DSLRs, but it sounds like most of these uh, companies have solved that problem. So it's okay to buy used, especially if you're starting new. Um, and 
even if you've been in business for a while, it's okay to buy used because technology changes so quickly. Don't you agree? Yes. I mean, from, from year to year, sometimes month to month, that camera is going to change, right? But I told them the camera really is important that the focusing is there, but the actual camera itself, I don't really have a preference because what really improves an image on your YouTube channel is lighting. So how you light your subject, how you light your background, that is more important to me. Uh, and it adds production value. People perceive you as being uh, a, a serious uh, YouTuber uh, if you have some of these things in order. So make sure you have good soft light on your face. If you're filming yourself doing, um, doing let's say cosmetics, you want a, either a ring light, a nice bright light. You don't wanna rely on a window light because then it, you limit yourself on what time of day you can film. And not on, not just that, but if the weather isn't great. Yeah, you, you want to be able to control the lighting. Yes, yeah, so you want to be able control to control lighting. your lighting and you can go live at any time you want. So that is my tip for filming a YouTube videos, making sure you have decent light and then getting a camera that's decent enough on autofocus. It really doesn't matter what brand. Just make sure you get something that has uh, good autofocusing abilities. Yeah. Like the YouTube version of this is being recorded on a Sony mm -hmm. A7R4. You don't have to get something like that. I've jumped around from camera body to camera body seeking out, you know, the highest megapixel camera that I wanted. Mm -hmm. And I ended up with the Sony A7R4. But I've had like low end uh, cameras uh, that do great. Mm -hmm. But some of them are very limited as far as the time they can record. Right, so yeah, that's yeah. that's something so, you got to think about as well. They'll stop and you'll have to restart the yes, recording. Yes, exactly. So you want to think about that when you when you do get it. Look at the record time, uh, the max record time. Right. Yeah, I mean, cameras are getting better now. Uh, and talking about the max record time, I also would recommend if you have a camera that can actually put in a uh, a battery pack with a power cord, do that because then you don't have to worry about the battery running out. Some people forget to recharge their batteries. Yep. I'm one of them, <laughs> and so so when you have it plugged in, you don't have to worry about running uh, uh, running on your battery, and you don't have to worry whether or not if you have a fully charged battery to do your full recording. So, so that is my tip for things camera related. Sean talked about uh, tech related items. So that's right. I, I I knew I had this in my mind because I spoke to a client today that just uh, yesterday and asked me. Oh, what camera should my daughter get for her YouTube channel? And I'm like, oh, wow, there's so many choices. Now. I know. Panasonic so GH5 is a really popular one with right. YouTube uh, vloggers. Mm -hmm. A lot of the Canons are super popular. Yeah. I it, mean, yeah, it's, it's just, uh, it just depends on what fits good in your hand, too, sometimes, and how you what what's needed for you. But mostly, top for me would be making sure it's got good autofocus, um, and then lighting is really important. Yeah, don't rule out don't rule out like um, your cameras on your phone because the iPhone oh that I goodness. have that it's amazing. is ama it's amazing. It yeah, so great. If, you, if your iPhone is terrific, go for it. Yeah. Um, if it can shoot 4K, it's awesome. Oh, so what, what, just go for it, and. Um, and making sure you have terrific audio, especially if you're like a talking head that's that's uh, sharing information and people need to be hear, able to hear your voice. You either have a, uh, a shotgun mic coming from above, pointed directly to your mouth, or that's connected to your camera, or an external recorder like an H6. Uh, like a Zoom. Yep. Which, by the way, this one's not even on because I forgot to turn it on, but so we're relying <laughs> on the audio from a shotgun, shotgun mic. mic. Yep. Right. So, so making sure, or you have a lav mic where it clips onto you and picks up your voice that way. Uh, because um, I don't know about you, when I go to the movies and, and I can't hear the audio, I can't enjoy the movie. So no. it's the same thing with YouTube videos. If you can't hear the person that, uh, that is giving you information or entertaining you, uh, it really doesn't matter. Well, there's a lot of how, background noise right. or, or just it's so echoey. Echoey or people yeah. chatting in the background. Yeah. It, it, it's distracting. So just make sure you get rid of those distractions. And uh, that's that's all I have to say about that. And um, so good audio. Make sure you have good audio. Yes. So that's, that's it. it. That's it for today's. Yes. Thank you for joining us today 
on the the Average Joe Daily Show. I'm Subban. I'm Sean Hill. And until next time, we'll see you later. And uh, we're looking forward to hearing people from people. I just want to, <laughs> I can't stop. I'm sorry. I, I can't, uh, I really want businesses to be involved. So if you want to be in the music video that we're putting together, um, contact us through uh, Facebook messages or our, um, our fan page because we really want to yeah, get your business out and let people know that you are uh, you're important to us. Yeah, like, like, subscribe, and share the notification bell icon on YouTube to the channel and let us know what you want to hear about. And com yeah, through the comments. Just comment below and we will be able to uh, make that part of our next show. Yeah, because I love different subject matter. Me too. We, we never know what we're going to talk about. That's right. All, All right. right, we're out. See ya. Peace.